Hello wonderful family, another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word. Hallelujah. I want to ask you, are you in Christ? Do you profess to know Jesus Christ? Would you say that uh, you are one who trusts Jesus, who trusts his word, who trusts Almighty God? If you are one of those, join me on this journey. And I'm going to be reading uh, from the book of uh, Mark chapter 4 from verses 35. Uh, pay attention. And he said to them, I'm reading from the One New Man Bible. Verse 35. And he said to them on that day, after, he, after it became evening, let us go across to the other side. This was Jesus. And metaphorically speaking, God giving an instruction, giving a word. He's giving you words. He's giving those who are associated with you words. He says, let us go across to the other side. You heard that word. Now you prepare to start to embark on that journey. Verse 36. And after they sent the crowd away, they took him as he was in the boat. And other boats were with him. And a great wind storm came up with a strong wind, and the waves beat upon the boat, so that now the boat was filled with water. In essence, they had they had obeyed, they had set off to do what God had asked to be done. Remember, Jesus is the Word. They had obeyed and set off to do what the Word had prescribed. They were carrying out God's Word. And in the midst of carrying out His Word, the storm arose. The storm arose to try and prevent them from getting to the other side it was very obvious the storm only came to stop them from carrying out God's word to try and show them that there was failure now in the midst of this apparent storm uh, what did they do did they balk did they stop and change course did they decide to put on pause what God had asked them to do to say okay we won't go over to the other side it's too dangerous this is not yielding fruit we have we'll do something else these other ones that we are sure of will go ahead and do it. Notice what the whole people who were involved in this action did except Jesus. Because Jesus said, let us now. Notice that the boat was filled with water. When a boat is filled with water, what is the next logical thing that happens? It flounders and it sinks. Because it is no longer more buoyant than the water that it is resting upon it will sink that's a natural thing now verse 38 and he was in the stand sleeping on a cushion so he was not perturbed by all this storm this hula baloo that was going on on around all this bruhaha he was as if he was careless people are his fellow disciples would have looked at it that look this guy is dangerous he doesn't see the physical things that we are seeing that is in fact, they had set aside what he had said in the beginning. All they were interested in is this doesn't look viable. Let us look for plan B, option B. This man is going crazy. Let us wake him up and let him change course. And he was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. So he appeared careless. And they roused him and were saying to him, they gathered around to, to, to query him. And were saying to him, Teacher, does it not concern you that we are perishing? They were more concerned for him and themselves and those around than apparently he, he who knew more. Does it not concern you? Does it not concern you that we are perishing? We are worried. We are worried. And when he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the lake, You must be silent. You must be muzzled. Then the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Verse 40, and he said to them, and he's saying to you, he's saying to me, he's saying to those of us who profess that we have a relationship with him, that he has given that instruction, let us go over to the other side. He said to them now, why are you timid? Why are you timid? Do you not yet have faith? In essence, he's asking, so you don't trust the word. You, are, you only act this way because in, in reality you don't trust the word. 
you believe that the situations and circumstances will trump that word if you trust that word irrespective of the situations and circumstances yes they might appear dire they might appear life-threatening they might appear as if it will cause perish a, a, a perishing it will cause ones to perish but if you trust trust god irrespective of what it is you will not act in a timid way you will keep trusting and if the if push comes to shove first of all you should have been at rest you shouldn't be worried if you are worried you are saying that you are out of trust if you say i'm worried because he, com he, co he commanded us says that we should have you no know, anxiety about anything we shouldn't be worried we should cast our cares upon him we should trust him now if you are worried it means that you've not trusted god you've not handed it over to god neither do you trust god so if you trust god if you trust his word if you are in tune with him irrespective of the external there's peace on the inside and that peace on the inside comes from the fact that you know that the one who created the heavens and the earth backs you and he said that he will never leave you nor forsake you irrespective of how it looks you are not enjoined to change course he says let us go over to the other side two things that you could have you could do in that situation you could rest in his word and lie down asleep as stand on a pillow like him or if the thing is troubling your sleep you stand up and speak to it the, the the only thing he required of them there to do was not to grumble or to think of changing course but to address the situation are you in christ if something seems to be perturbing you your duty is to speak to those situations there's nothing you can do physically because that storm arose basically because he was going to the other side to cast out those demons from gadara and the reason behind that storm was that they didn't want that mission fulfilled it was not a natural storm so it could not be handled with natural means if you back out you you miss the mark and your father will not be pleased with you so when those kind of storms arise take your stance if you know the word and speak to the storm address the storm and keep heading forward don't let anyone turn you around it is um, it's it is it is an affront to your father if your father has given you instructions let us go over to the other side and a, a storm or a situation causes you to change course the bible says that if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small act like your lord jesus that's why he came to show us to demonstrate to us what we should do and then what what next is this says do you not yet have faith and they feared intensely and were saying to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the lake obey him? Hallelujah. Let me read from uh, Matthew's account. I've thought about it, but let me read from Matthew, Matthew's account. Verse, Matthew chapter... Um, sorry. Matthew's account. Uh, Matthew chapter 8 from verses 23 to 27. I'll read that fast. When he went into the boat, his disciples followed him, and he, behold, a great storm came on the lake. So the boat was covered by the waves, but he was sleeping. That's what he expects you to be doing, not to be worried, not to be bothered. And then they came and woke him, saying, Lord, you must immediately save us. We are lost. Then he said to them, Little fates, why are you cowards? He's asking you, why are you a coward? Why are you a coward? Then after he got up, he rebuked the winds and the lake, and the great calm came, and the men marvel saying what sort is this that even the winds and the lake obey him luke chapter 8 verses 22 to 25 and it happened on one of the days that he and his disciples embarked in a boat and he said to them let us go over to the other side of the lake and they set out and he fell asleep while they were sailing then a strong gust of wind came down upon the lake and they were being swamped and endangered and when they went to him they woke him saying master master we are being destroyed after he had said let us go over to the other side and they are saying we are being destroyed is that not a duplicity of words he has said something the king of kings the master of the universe has said something and then you now come to tell him that something else is happening is that possible they woke him saying master, master we are being destroyed then after he got up he rebuked the wind and the waves of the water then it stopped and it was calm and he said to them where is your faith i challenge you where is your faith where is your trust in god but being afraid they were amazed saying 
to one another. Who then is this that even commands the winds and the water and they obey him? He says unto you, where is your faith? Why do you want to turn back? Why do you want to go for plan B? I'm asking you why there's, some, there's, there's a charge you've been given. Why based on situations and circumstances do you want to stare away because of adversity that appears? That adversity was put there by the enemy. If you turn away, you have told your father that he is a failure. You've told him that he cannot put you through and he will not be pleased with you. If it troubles you enough to wake you from your sleep, your sleep of peace, speak and address that wind and that situation. But do not turn back. God bless you. Hallelujah.